Hello, I'm Boatman and you should subscribe to ZRB. Also drop a like on the video right now. Alright, yo, let's get right into the video. As you guys can tell by what happened before in the title, we're not gonna do any bullshit intros, we're just gonna get right into it. So, what you guys wanna do is in my Discord in the download section, there's gonna be a link to this Google Drive. All you wanna do is download this Google Drive. Once it's downloaded, you just wanna open it. Now, this works for After Effects, which can be used for Premiere Pro 2. So, it's work for After Effects, Premiere Pro, and Sony Vegas. I'm not sure about the sony vegas side this is how to install it's the same thing you just run it so what you want to do is whatever side you're on you just want to open after effects code or vegas code i'm gonna be opening after effects because i use premiere pro you're gonna open it and then once it's done loading you're just gonna want to hit next i accept next and it's gonna ask you for username and code you want to use these this is the crack that I found. This is the one I used to get it. And you just want to install the version and it'll automatically install it. You want to hit finished. And then all you do is open Premiere Pro or whatever you're using. I'll show you guys how to use it. Let's get right into that. All right, so once you guys are opening up your Premiere Pro and everything, you want to go to effects and search up RSMB. And these are three RSMB you should have. And then I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use it. So I'm gonna just get any clip from one of these. Just get like something like this. I'm just gonna cut it to right here. All right, and then you just wanna drag RSMB on, onto it. You guys are good to go. The thing about RSMB is it's really high quality. So you wanna add it after you're done with editing at the video. Because when you don't, it's really unrendered and it doesn't look good. If you want to look at it while you're editing, you have to go to Sequence, Render Selection. And then once it's done rendering, I'm going to show you guys that it's good. Alright, so once it is done, you guys can see it's going to pop up green like this because you're done rendering with it. So now you just want to play it. And you can tell it's a lot smoother than your original clip. And then I'm going to undo it just to show you guys the quality before. I still, with my OBS settings, the quality does look still pretty good compared to other 5M people, but it could be smoother. I don't know why, but my recording is 60 FPS, but RSMB just makes it look extremely smooth. So, uh, yeah, guys, that's how you add it. Now I'm going to be showing you my render and OBS settings. Let's get right into that. Alright, to show you guys my render settings, I'm going to just be going back to my uh, wait on me montage. As you can see for RSMB, you add it after you're done editing. You can just make an adjustment layer and add it over the entire thing. No, add it over your entire montage. Of course, I can't look at it because I need to render the whole thing pre-render. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna just be showing you guys my setting, my render settings. So I'm gonna go to export media. And I usually go to 4K or 1440p, then 1080p, I upscale it because when you upscale, it does better at the YouTube Kodak. Like, for example, we'll go to my YouTube channel, I'll explain. So, there's the normal YouTube Kodak. I forgot the numbers, because I haven't looked at it in such a long time. But when you go to Stats for Nerds, right-clicking hit Stats for Nerds, my videos have VP09 Kodak, which, whenever you upload a video to YouTube, it decompresses it, making the quality worse. That's why you put it to, like, 1440p or 4K, for example. And when it decompresses, it only decompresses it down to either 1440p or back to 1080p. But if you uploaded it at 1080p, it'll decompress it down to probably 720p quality, even though it still say it. So that's why you want to get that Kodak. It's just better rendering overall for YouTube. So that's why you want to export at higher upscaling quality. So I go by H.264, high bit rate, that's just my normal one. Um, yeah, export video, export audio. Then I go down to the video section and put this to 3840 x2160 because I do 4K exports takes me a while but it's worth it i render a maximum depth i leave all this right here normal 
uh, I put this instead of main to high and I leave this at five by two. Higher isn't needed, especially for just five and montages. How does he need for five and montages at all, but. Uh, I like to do CBR. It all just depends on what the clips are like. CBR is consistent throughout the video, so I usually do that for tutorials. VBR is variable, so it depends on how much movement there is in the video. So, VBR 2 pass takes a while, so I usually just do VBR 1 pass. And because I'm exporting at 4K, my range is like at an 80 minimum, I'm pretty sure. So I put it to my target. I put it to about 90. And my maximum, I let it go up to if there's a ton of movement, I have to do 120. Somewhere around there, that's for 4K. You gotta search up the different bit rate bit rates and stuff for whatever resolution you're using and then i always use maximum render quality those are my audio settings i don't think they're any different they're just on the highs they can be i think that all just depends on your mic to be honest and then i don't do anything else and then yeah that's my file size uh, i always do frame blending no matter what and i just export and sit there for like an hour uh time to go into my obs settings Okay, time to show you guys my recording settings and my OBS settings. Right now I'm doing high FPS recording, but I'll show you my normal ones. So on settings, uh, you go want to go to output recording. These are all mine. MP4 format. I use the new H.264 because I have a higher end graphics card. I lead the output to 1080p. I do CBR. CBR is better. It keeps the bitrate consistent throughout the whole thing. Unlike QCP, VBR. Lossless quality is just literally useless. No PC can do that. I keep my CBR at around 50,000. That's pretty high. Average should be like 30,000, I'm pretty sure, for like normal recording quality. Some people go to like 60,000, 80,000, but I don't think that's necessary for 5M. I keep my preset to quality to high, or I put my preset to quality. Uh, my profile's on high. Keep these at zero and I check those off. Now, video, since I'm doing high FPS recording right now, I'm, at, I'm recording at 240 FPS, but normally I'd be a common FPS value right here, and it'd be at 60. My downscale filter is at 36, so sharpening and all that is good when I'm upscaling and downscaling, so it doesn't lose quality of 4K. Uh, yeah, these are just 1080p under advanced. These are all normal. My process priority is at high. That's the only difference. Then everything else is good. Uh, one other thing I have is I have clips set up. I don't know where you do that. You gotta check it in somewhere around here and you enable replay buffer right here and then that's my time and then I set my key. Those are my settings.